We're going to play uh, Cats and Kittens by Peter Erskine.
I'd like to take a moment to uh, share a little bit of my philosophy. I have found that, well, number one, uh, music making has become a bit of a reductive process for me. It's, it's not finding out how many more notes I can play, although I'll occasionally uh, indulge. But uh, it's, it's, it's trying to find the best notes to put in the best place and, uh, and so it becomes more a matter not so much of playing the note, but uncovering and discovering the spaces between the notes. So more and more I started singing the subdivisions to myself, the offbeats, the notes that I wasn't playing. Just a real quick demonstration, if I may. The simplest jazz beat I can think of to play is uh, when you play four quarter notes on the ride cymbal, hi-hat on beats two and four, and a cross stick on every fourth beat. Um, this is a classic beat that uh, Jimmy Cobb played with the Miles Davis group, for example. And um, if you can hold a pair of drumsticks, you can play this drum beat. I'll mention two things real quick. Um, one, you don't want to choke any part of your instrument, certainly not the drumstick. If I hold it tightly and play the cymbal, I don't get a very nice tone. However, if I let the stick breathe, it sounds like what it is, a musical instrument. All right, and I also try to keep my rebounds focused and, and, and stay relaxed. Now, I'll play this beat. Uh, it goes something like this. Now, I'll play that same beat thinking just of the quarter note pulse, the tempo, the time. We're in 4-4, four, four, and it should sound uh, pretty OK. Goes something like this. Now, um, I will play the same beat, but I'll be thinking of the subdivisions, which in the case of jazz is the swung eighth note or triplet feel. And hopefully you'll hear and feel a difference. One, two, one, two, three. Uh, uh, uh. It's, it's a different kind of, of a feeling. And, and the second beat I played, uh, it's, the effect is that the beat opens up, uh, becomes a little bit wider. Even my physical uh, uh, motion changes as I'm playing. My leg starts to lift in, in more of a swinging motion, and, and, and the, the whole body language changes. And the reason that, the, that I found this to be important, not only as a uh, as a player, but as a teacher, because that's part of the jazz tradition is that we pass it along, as we're trying to do tonight. And um, I found that um, it helped to explain, you know, you, you can ask eight, eight drummers to come up and play the same beat, a simple beat, so it's, you know, technique is not the issue. Um, and one or two of those drummers might play in, in such a way that you go like, yeah, that's really swinging, or that's really rocking, or that's funky, or that's cooking. And the other drummers, you don't have uh, much of a reaction. And I think the same with the way someone plays a tenor solo. It's, it's not just learning the notes or learning licks, it's breathing life into the music. And, and um, one way that I've found to, uh, to get closer to that life or that truth of music is by uh, honoring and observing these spaces, these wonderful moments between the notes. Thank you very much.